Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new super interesting controller from ASUS known as the ROG Rakiri Pro. Now keep in mind they make a non-pro version that doesn't have all of the bells and whistles built in like the OLED display and RGB which we have here on the Pro. And overall, yeah, the Pro version is a really expensive controller, but it's something that I was interested in checking out. And uh, this is officially licensed by Xbox, so it does work with the Series S or the Series X. But the main reason I wanted to pick this up was for the Ally when I'm running it in dock mode. But here it is. It's definitely a good looking controller. Love the two-tone. And as soon as we boot it up, you'll see we've got that OLED display right up top. From here, we can get all the information we need from the controller. And we've got that RGB. It's compatible with Armory Crate and Aura Sync, so you can sync it up to your laptop's RGB, or if you're using it with the Ally, you can sync it up with that. Obviously, inside of the box, you're going to get the controller. We also have a really hefty USB Type-C to full-size USB cable, in case you want to use it wired. Plus, in order to program this from our PC, we will need to plug it in. But this also supports Bluetooth, and it has a 2.4 GHz dongle around back here, so we don't have to worry about lag with that 2.4 as opposed to Bluetooth, but you know, if you want to alleviate all of the lag, always go wired with your controllers. But it's really cool they included this, and keep in mind, when you're connected using Bluetooth, you won't need this dongle. The first thing I saw when they announced this controller was the dish style D-pad. Not a huge fan of them, but I gotta say it feels a lot better than I thought it would, and we will be testing it out in a fighting game. That's one of the main reasons I love a good D-pad. We've got Street Fighter 6 now, and you definitely don't want to use those modern controls that they have built into the game. Go with the classic so you can pull those moves off with the D-pad. Round back, we do have a bunch of these funky buttons. Really looks like the ones on the rear of the ROG Ally, and I think that's what they were kind of going with. So we can program these from software, so we can set them up as triggers or basically any button you'd like. And when it comes to the triggers, we've got those locks here. Two positions, so we've got the quick trigger or the long throw. Really comes in handy for racing games or if you want to swap over to a shooter. And up top, we've got our menu buttons for the OLED display and USB Type-C. So the controller actually feels great. You know, if you're used to an Xbox-style controller, then you'll be right at home with this. And again, this D-pad is not for everybody. This wouldn't be my first choice for a fighting game. But the way they've got this set up with the micro switches, it actually has a really good role to it. I think it's going to work out pretty good in some of my favorites. Analog sticks feel great. Unfortunately, they're not using hall based sensors and the triggers or the analog sticks, but we can adjust the dead zones from software. And that OLED display is pretty cool. I mean, it's not something that you really need on a controller, but it's nice to have. We can add different kind of wallpapers to this, and holding our right button up top here is going to bring us into the menu. Profiles, wallpaper, status, system, screen off time, screen brightness, and uh, from profile, we can set up four different, so we can swap them on the fly if we want to, and this can work over USB, Bluetooth, or 2.4, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, back up with the left button up top, got some extra wallpapers, and you can upload more through Armory Crate. Status, that's just going to give us how we're connected and battery life, so I'm on profile one, little over half battery and I'm connected over Bluetooth right now. System, this is where we're going to choose between the Xbox or PC and from PC you do have to switch this over to Bluetooth 2.4 or USB in order for it to work properly with the dongle or USB cable and directly from here we can also change the screen off time you can leave it on for as long as you want and we can change the brightness. I've got this jacked all the way up and uh, so far, it's actually been a pretty decent controller. I've tested it out with a few different games. I haven't gone with anything fighting yet, but we'll check out those trigger locks. Got a pretty decent throw for those racing games when you need some more gas or brake. As you can see, you can lock it right down for that quick throw. Really comes in handy for a lot of FPS games. It does have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on it. Plus, we've got our pair button down here. And around back, we've got those four programmable buttons. Now there's a lot that we can customize with this controller, but we need to get into some software. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to my ROG Ally. And right now I'm just connected over Bluetooth. And if we head over to our content section inside of Armory Crate SE, we don't see that controller. And that's because it does need to be connected over USB. So as soon as I plug it in, we can head right over to that connected device section. And from here, 
we can totally program this controller. We can change the sensitivity and dead zones of the analog sticks, the triggers. We can mess around with the RGB, change the screen brightness. We can also set up a different wallpaper for the OLED display. And I just moved over to a game capture so we could take a better look at this. From here, we've got our profiles. So I'm just gonna be sticking with profile one here. Left trigger, right trigger. Start is set at 33, end is at 50. We can fully adjust this and it does give us a little animation here while we use the trigger. Sticks, kind of the same thing here, but we do have a response curve that we can also mess around with. So uh, both of these sticks are fully customizable. Key assignment. This will be for the back buttons. We've got M1, M2, M3, M4. We can assign these to basically any controller button or keyboard button. And vibration. So this does have the uh, trigger motors on both. We can turn this all the way up. Oh my gosh, that sucker uh, definitely works there. I wasn't expecting it to be that hardcore. Lighting. Got a few different presets that we can mess around with. Plus we could set it up with Aura Sync if you kind of want to match it up to whatever device you have, be it an ROG laptop or the Ally itself. Power, charging right now because I'm plugged in over USB. Lighting alert after 20%, we can take that down or up. It does support firmware updates and we can change the animation on our OLED display. Now there is an upload button somewhere here, upload file. I haven't found any way to kind of make one, you know, a nice animation here. If anybody's made any or has any ideas, let me know in the comments below. But we can set it up with text. So if you wanted some scrolling text, you can go ahead and customize this however you'd like. Got normal scroll speed. We can uh, keep it stationary, slow, normal. And uh, once you get your text in there, you're just going to tap apply. It's going to upload it. But so far, I think they've done a great job with all of the customization we can do with this controller right now. But, you know, one of the main reasons people pick a controller up is to play games with it. So let's go ahead and check out this D-pad and the triggers. Okay, so yeah, one of the main reasons I wanted to get a hold of this controller was uh, for my ROG Ally. I personally like using it in dock mode here so we can get the most out of it. And uh, so far works out really well. We've got Street Fighter 6 going and I am connected over Bluetooth. You're going to get the most latency using Bluetooth. Next would be 2.4, but if you're looking for zero latency with any controller, always go wired with it. Bluetooth doesn't present an issue for me because I don't play competitively or anything like that. And overall, this little D-pad isn't bad at all. Really nice roll for pulling off those special moves, but you know, if it was up to me, we'd have a swappable top here. That way we could go with a traditional D-pad versus the dish style. And I see a lot of companies coming out with these dish style D-pads and no way to kind of swap it over. Would have been really nice if they kind of added something like that, like the Xbox Elite controller has. There's definitely controllers with better D-pads on the market, but this is working out pretty good. Another thing that's really important to me when it comes to controllers are the triggers. And it really comes down to, you know, my favorite genre being racing games. I really need control over that gas and brake, and these definitely seem to be working really well. So as you saw from the settings, we can fully adjust these. And I've set it up uh, the way I think I want it. I might just go zero to 100% from the settings later on. But as you can see, we do have kind of a launch control here. We don't need to press it all the way. We can go halfway with it. That way you can kind of feather that gas and brake really helps out when drifting and just racing in general. And Forza Horizon 5 does have a launch control setting from the menu, but I always disable it. And even though the Hunicorn here is all-wheel drive, not flooring it right off the line is kind of the way to go to get the best times in the quarter mile runs. But uh, when drifting or just racing all together, I personally don't put it down to the floor when taking corners and things like that. Really like to feather that gas and brake to get real control over it. And so far, it's been working out really well. These analog sticks are very accurate. And again, we can go through and customize all of the dead zones on this controller. So in the end, definitely digging this controller, but I'd say one of the main downsides here with this thing is the price. Coming in at $160 over on Best Buy's website, it's definitely one of the most expensive controllers that I've ever picked up. And I do own some of the Xbox Elite controllers. Is it worth that price? Personally, I don't think it's worth $160. This would have been a good $99 controller for the Pro version, a little less for the non-Pro, but you know, the non-Pro itself right now is $99, and I think that's where the price point on this should have been. 
I know we've got that OLED display and RGB, but that really doesn't help us out with gaming either. But in the end, it's always going to be up to you. If you're interested in learning a little more, maybe picking one up. I'll leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.